Armed with their latest round of stimulus checks, consumers appear to be out there spending at discount stores, malls, and yes, of course, online as well. Let's see where the winners and losers are in retail right now with Jan Niffen. He's the CEO of J. Rogers Niffen Worldwide Enterprises. Jan, always good to speak with you here. Really liked your note. You, you focused on um, on those retailers that are that are keeping it local. What does that mean, and who are those companies uh, that are really focused on, on their local communities that could be winning uh, from the pandemic as a result? Well, if you look at the local guys, the ones I was talking about were particularly Casey's General Store. They're very local and they're rural and suburban. And then, you know, if you look down the list there, you'll see Tractor Supply. They've done really well. They've also got improved management over the last few years. They're doing a better job. They're growing. They've done some acquisitions. So they're a very strong player in the ex-urban part of the world. And then I put in Ollie's Bargain Barn as well, because I think Ollie's has that kind of goofy, friendly, we're at home feel, and they're also outside of the city. And then I used Boot Barn because I think no matter where a Boot Barn is, and even though they're a national chain, and even though they're not particularly localized from the point of view of their selection, they feel very local and they feel very homey when you're in there. I also put Five Below and Ulta on the list because I also think the consumer sees them as their store as well. And that's Partially because in Alta's case, you know, they do have hair salons. And so people tend to go to the same one when they go to it. So it feels local. But the real point here is the customer right now wants it to feel like it's just for me. They want it to be environmentally friendly. They want it to be local. They want to be supporting the community. There's a lot to it other than just the fact that we're moving out of the city. So I think both of those trends had started before COVID. They've just been reinforced by COVID. Now, on the other end, High-end luxury retail is doing fabulously well. That has nothing to do with local. That has everything to do with things are coming back. Uh, to take a step back for just a second here, you look at the week um, from Friday, March 12th through Thursday, March 18th, and talk about how strong that period was for sales, strongest thus far in 2021. There has been this conventional wisdom that as things reopen, people's sh uh, spending is going to shift from the things they were buying online during the pandemic to going out and doing stuff, right? Rather than buying stuff, doing stuff, I guess. It sounds like you don't necessarily agree with that view if you're looking at particularly some of these local retailers as still maintaining their strength. Am, am I reading that correctly? Oh, I do think that discretionary retail is going to take off. So if you're talking about shoes, handbags, dresses, apparel in general, it's going to be very strong now because I'm one of the people on the Roaring Twenties thesis. I think that right now you're going to look in your closet and you're going to say, God, I hate all this stuff. Or you're going to say, man, I gained 15 pounds, probably 19 pounds if you got the COVID-19 and you can't wear it. Or maybe you got in great shape because you bought a Peloton and 12 other things for your exercise room and you're a lot thinner. You've changed your body. But if nothing else, you're a year and a half older than the last time you really went out and bought any clothes and your clothes are a year and a half older. So I think we're going to go do stuff. It's going to be fun. We're going to take vacations and we're going to buy one heck of a lot of clothes in order to go do that because you're not going to like anything in your closet tomorrow. You know, Jen, as you talk through some of those names that you like and the, the geographical footprint that they have, I recall a, a trend that, you know, maybe I misinterpreted it, but back in the 2010s, um, big retailers wanted to have smaller locations in more urban centers to play that kind of consumer theme. Is, is that going to get rethought as we get into the 2020s and people start realizing that, you know, the suburbs treat them just fine? Well, smaller is not going to get rethought. Everybody wishes right now their footprints were smaller. Most people wish their number of stores was even smaller. So that's not going to change. Where you put those stores may change by a little bit because if the urban area is not quite as attractive, you may be putting that smaller store in the suburbs or even in rural areas. But that smaller footprint is going to be where we go because you're just selling so much more online. And I am one of those people who believes that we are not going to see a retrenchment of online selling. 2021 is going to be a bigger year online as a percent of total sales than 2020 was, just like 2019, 2020, 2021 were bigger than any year before. 2021 will be bigger than any year before as far as penetration online. The growth online won't be quite as high as it was last year, but we're not going to go back. 
So you're going to see fewer stores needed. You're going to see smaller stores be more normal. And you're going to see digital selling. I don't even call it online anymore. It's just digital or it's physical. Either you're standing at the counter or you bought it on your phone or some device. Digital sales are going to grow again this year as a percent of total sales. And they're going to grow again in 2022 and every year thereafter until I'm dead. Maybe not till you're dead, but certainly till I'm dead. So we're going to see more penetration and that's not going away. Well, Jay, you know, just given the, the rising uh, sales in online, we saw a lot of people move out of the cities uh, into the rural, rural neighborhoods. What happens to these flagship stores that are still open? I look at New York City, what, Nordstrom has two flagship lo locations. How, do, how does that stay open? How does that make money? Does it make money? Well, you know, New York's an interesting microcosm, but let's just look at it broadly. Big flagship stores are going to be around for a very long time, and very small satellite stores are going to be around for a long time. But we're going to need fewer big flagships. And Nordstrom had told us that before COVID. They were already in a big flagship store closing program, and pretty much so is everybody else. So we're going to get both ends of that barbell. We're going to have some big, great flagships that draw, that have everything you could want in them. And we're going to get smaller, much smaller in some cases. You know, Nordstrom's got some 1,500-foot locations now. That's a tenth the size of their 150,000-square-foot stores, and they have some bigger than 150,000. So, we're, I mean, we're going to see... It's a hundredth the size. We're going to see an enormous change in what size we need to serve the customer. So if you can do big full service out of 150,000 square feet, but you can give people 100 or 1,500 square feet, and they can come in and they can have a glass of wine, they can have a glass of water, they can return goods, they can put stuff in for being altered, they can do all that sort of stuff in these ancillary stores. That's what we're going to see. It's going to be spoken hub. We're not going to have lots more big flagships, but we're still going to have big flagships for all of these major retailers.